year, the season of Advent, and that time when we celebrate, uh, as we just said, the Lord be with you. The Lord is with us. Emmanuel means God with us. Hey, just, uh, I know it's going to come up, and if we hear it reminded, uh, are reminded of it twice, in your bulletin, the last page is a schedule for all of the upcoming services. Do you know that nobody came to church last Sunday? <laughs> oh, that was fun. Last Sunday, um, we were out shoveling, and I don't know, I did something to my, uh, uh, my it's kind of embarrassing, my left buttocks. <laughs> I pulled a muscle or something, and it's aggravating that sciatic nerve. So if I, I limp a little bit, that's what's going on. But if it doesn't seem too bad, if you want to put that in your prayers. <laughs> so we'll just let it go with that. <laughs> also, though, um, Wednesday we had a Thanksgiving service, and the weather wasn't bad. It was prior to the snow. Um, uh, yeah, no, it, it was prior to the snow, and uh, we had a very, very small turnout, like 14 people. So please take a look at the schedule. We do have a Wednesday uh, midweek Advent service coming up this Wednesday, November 30th. It's only a service. It's not the potluck and the service this week. The following weeks, um, uh, we thought we'd go for an informal service downstairs and a potluck preceding it. So please keep that in mind. Uh, for midweek Wednesday. You can watch the uh, World Cup soccer on Tuesday night, but uh, Wednesday, uh, we'd sure love to have you here and fellowship and worship together. Let's begin our time of worship on this first Sunday in the season of Advent as we sing our hymn of invocation, Christ is our cornerstone. Please rise and we sing together. Christ is our cornerstone, on him alone we build. With his true saints alone, the courts of heaven are filled. On his great love, our hopes we place of present grace and joy. Here may we gain from heaven the grace which we implore, and may that grace once given be with us evermore until that day when all the blessed to endless rest are called. of praise these hallowed courts shall ring our voices we will raise the three in one to sing and thus proclaim in joyful song both Lord and Lord and Lord In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, seeking a clean conscience, let us first then confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. 
In our sinful condition, we are moved to repentance by the Spirit of God, who then points us to the work of Christ. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The apostles proclaim the mystery and promise of God is now revealed to the saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. As we join in singing, we light the first candle on the wreath. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly exile here until the Son of God coming of the Messiah enlarges our hearts with hope as it did for those who heard prophetic words. In those days I will cause a righteous branch to spring up and my people shall be called out. They shall be called the Lord is our righteousness. We continue in verse 6. Oh, come thou day spring from on high and cheer us by thy drawing nigh. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight. King is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. Save us, we pray, O Lord. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Reading from Psalm 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. This was decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. The epistle reading this morning is from the book of Romans, the 13th chapter, verses 8 through 14. From the Apostle Paul. Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you should not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we were first believed. The night is far gone. The day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Jesus said, But concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. As were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, <clears throat> they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in, one, in the field. One will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. This is the Gospel of the Lord. To you. We join now confessing our common faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible 
and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we join in singing the Advent Hymn of the Day. Hymn 331, please note, stanzas one through three and stanza five. The advent of our King, our prayers must now employ, and we must hymns of welcome sing in strains of holy joy. The everlasting Son incarnate deigns to be himself a servant's form puts on to set his servants free o zion's daughter rise to meet your lowly king nor let your faithless heart despise the peace he comes to bring. Before the dawning day, let sin's dark deeds be done. The grace of our coming Lord Jesus Christ be with us now in this time as the word, the word that is given us in Holy Scripture. And that word that we turn to for this first Sunday of Advent's meditation is from the word that was appointed for the Old Testament lesson for this week from the book of the prophet Isaiah. We decided to hold off the reading of that text until now so that it's fresh in your minds as we discuss and meditate upon it. From Isaiah chapter 2 in verses 1 through 5. This is what the son, Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. 
He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations. He will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, descendants of Jacob now, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord for us on this day. If I were to take a, a, a large piece of paper and roll it up into kind of a cone shape and speak into it, you remember what those were called, right? Megaphones, yeah. I'm amazed how well they actually worked. How they would amplify the volume of someone speaking like to a group. We don't need it now because we have all this electronic equipment to amplify the sound and the voice. But they actually could direct the sound waves a little more focused on the audience and worked pretty well. Isaiah the prophet, whom we're going to hear from, every Sunday now through Christmas is kind of like God's megaphone. God is speaking through the prophet. The prophets were God's spokesmen. And so the people of Israel heeded the word of the prophet. They didn't always follow and obey it, unfortunately. And we too, in this Advent season, heed the word of, I call Isaiah our Christmas prophet because he foretells of the hope and the joy that is ours in the coming of that Messiah. And so today, as we begin this Advent season, listen up and hear what the prophet Isaiah says to you. Isaiah begins his book in the Old Testament with quite a pronouncement of judgment. It wasn't very nice, and punishment was coming to the people of Israel. They had been walking in the darkness of not following the God who brought them into that promised land. They were searching after uh, false idols and gods, the gods of the Canaanites, rather than the one and only true God. The nation was suffering. They were split apart. There was the north and the south. We know something about that in our history. There was Israel to the north and, and uh, Judah to the south, and Israel had already been destroyed by Assyria, their enemy, and many deported away. And now Judah, the kingdom to the south was being threatened by their neighbors and by Babylon and Isaiah comes along and he says you know because you didn't listen and heed the word of God and follow him you will be judged and you will be punished and your nation will be destroyed and that's exactly what happened the nation was destroyed the city wall was tore down the temple the the presence of God was demolished and many of the best and the finest of the land were hauled away into captivity for 70 years in Babylon. Not the kind of word from God you want to hear. They were walking in darkness. You know what it's like to walk in darkness. You ever get up in the middle of the night and you, you need to navigate your way, perhaps from the bedroom to the bathroom, I suppose, and it's dark, and you think, oh, I know the house pretty well, I can manage it, I know what's where, and then you end up walking into something. It's not easy to walk in darkness, and the children of Israel were walking in this darkness, and, and they couldn't see God anymore, and we walk in some dark times ourselves right now. Sin and evil, they're alive and well. They're uh, flourishing, it would seem. We see it all around us, the consequences of sin and evil, all kinds of tragedies and killings. Uh, will these mass shootings ever, ever go away? 
you sort of wonder how often can these continue we see it in the church there's divisions in our nation we see it divisions in our churches disagreements and people leaving churches we see many of them declining and sadly at a record amount churches in north america and in the united states are closing at, at a record rate we do walk in a, a dark time so let us heed the light that isaiah shines for god on us as well god turns that light on for isaiah he and then isaiah reflects that vision of of god's hope to the people of israel and through his written word to us even today and that hope is about the one who is faithful to his people even though they are not faithful to him there is light at the end of the tunnel have you ever had someone say that to you you're going through a difficult time a challenging time and a friend comes up and they try to comfort you and say you know i i know you're having a really rough time right now whatever it might be family problems money problems uh, health issues and things like that and they say you know i i, I pray for you and I, I just want you to know there is really even though it's really dark right now there's light at the end of the tunnel I, I had someone say that to me at one time in my life, and I kind of felt like turning around and whacking them. But <laughs> it just kind of hit me the wrong way. But as cliche as it sounds, there's some real truth to it. There is light, and that's the light that Isaiah holds up. And there is light at the end of the tunnel. We can trust in God's promises. There is hope even though sometimes it feels like there's very little to hope for. So Isaiah shares this vision. He says, God will establish his holy mountain. It will be the highest one of all. Now, not, not so much in elevation and feet. If that were it, it would have to, God would establish his temple on that mountain. It would have to probably be what? Mount, uh, um, uh, what's the highest mountain in the world? Yeah, it would have to be that mountain. It's not. In fact, the Temple Mount in Jerusalem is it's more like a hill. It's not that high, but it is the highest and most important place because the Lord's temple will stand on it. That's the place of the presence of God. That's where God's word is heard. The people of Israel, they had to go to the temple to truly worship, to offer sacrifices. They could pray. They could gather together in synagogues and read the Torah and, and uh, meditate upon God's work and his will for his people. But the true and only place for worship was, was in Jerusalem. Can you imagine if it were that way today? Say for us Lutherans, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod is based in St. Louis. And we could gather in our, our churches and we could read the word and meditate. We could study the word and so forth. But at least once or several times a year, we would have to make the journey to St. Louis in order to truly worship God. Well, it's not that way now. But that's how it was. And the Lord will establish his temple on that mountain in Jerusalem. Do you see the, the impact that would have if an enemy would come in and destroy that temple? That would say their gods are stronger than the God of Israel. And he also foretells a time when all nations will stream to it to hear God's word. Why? So that they might walk in God's paths, that they might live according to his will well we know that time hasn't come all nations streaming to that place of god's word and presence but that time is coming and we've had little glimpses little fulfillments along the way when you think of it um, uh, people streaming into jerusalem at the time to celebrate uh, the feast of pentecost from all different nations and they hear god's word 
proclaimed on that Pentecost by the power of the Spirit in their own language. All nations will come. We even get a little a glimpse of that in the visit of the Magi in Epiphany. From the far Gentile nations, these nations stream to worship this Christ child. But that fulfillment, complete fulfillment, is yet still to come. And God will do what? He will judge the nations. He will settle disputes among people. He will establish a time of peace, or as uh, the Jewish people would say, that time of shalom. That's what, it's not just peace and, and lack of conflict. He will establish true shalom between God the Creator, the Holy God, and the sinful uh, people of God who've been redeemed through Jesus Christ's death on the cross. That will be that true messianic age, that's shalom. Now, we're, we're in that messianic age right now to a degree. It's not completely and fully recognized or realized yet, but we know that there is shalom and peace between us and God because we, as we just received earlier, we know the forgiveness of sins that we receive through Jesus Christ. But we still live in an evil world. We're both saint and sinner still, and we continue to sin. But the day will come, and we heard that in our gospel lesson, and we hear it again, that fulfilling day when absolute fulfillment of shalom and peace between God and his people who follow him will come. And, and implements of war will not be needed anymore. Nations won't ha have military forces anymore. They won't need uh, uh, implements of warfare. Swords will be turned into plowshares, instruments for agriculture to grow food for the hungry, and spears into pruning hooks. There will be true peace and shalom. That's the vision of the birth of the Messiah that we prepare to celebrate. But it's also the vision of the return of the victorious Christ on that last day. It's kind of like double vision. I know double vision's not a good thing for us physically, but that's kind of the theme of Advent. It's this double vision. We look forward to that coming when, time when Christ will return. And we say, come Lord Jesus. We want him to come now. But we also celebrate his incarnate taking on flesh and, and dying on the cross for us. Now on that last day, um, it will be an amazing day. And we read in scripture, the trumpet will sound. Look forward to that. The trumpet will sound. What do you think the trumpet's going to play? Do you think it's going to play like a few weeks ago we celebrated Veterans Day? Many Veteran Day uh, celebrations had trumpets, right? And what did they play? Taps, yeah. They played, you know, that reverent, slow, but, but honoring song of taps for all who have fallen in service uh, in their military uh, service to this country and to each and every one of us. But on that last day, the angel will blow the trumpet, will not play taps. What do you think that angel will play? What's that trumpet? It's going to be reveille. Time to get up and time to get moving. How does Reveille go? Dum, dum, da, da, dum, dum, da, or something like that, isn't it? You know, it will stir us up to that time when Christ will come and all of uh, righteousness will be fulfilled in him and we will know that true peace of being with our God. That's the light at the end of the tunnel that we look for. Now, I suppose we could end with that. That's the joy and hope uh, of Advent and, and Christmas. But I do believe the prophet has another, perhaps even the main point yet, to make. Here he is 700 years before the birth of Christ, and he's, by God's vision, predicting all of the prophesying all of this, and, and it's, it's for the people of Israel, but it's also as equally for you and I here in Elma or the folks over in East Aurora, 2,700 plus years from the time this vision and prophecy was given. 
And the point is not so much that we focus on the future, that we focus on the light at the end of the tunnel. No, I think what Isaiah is saying, in light of that light at the end of the tunnel, in light of the victory and the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world, the light of eternity, let us now, let us now walk in that light and hope in a dark and sinful world. Uh, I'm amazed at these cell phones. We use them for so many things to communicate. I, I think we probably use our cell phones uh, pr very little to talk on, but we text on them, we uh, play games on them, we uh, take care of our emails, we do all these different kinds of things, take pictures with them. But you, you know one of the greatest things I do with my cell phone? is that flashlight. <laughs> when I'm walking in darkness, if I'm at church and it's dark and I'm, I'm not as familiar where all the light switches are, that, that light, and I think what Isaiah is saying, now walk in that light of the Lord. And in fact, we see that at Christmas time, don't we? How much is focused on light? The, the lighting of the advent wreath, the, the church, or, or the Christmas trees with all of the, the lights on them and, and decorations. But we are that light in this sinful and dark world. And so I think what Isaiah is really saying, let us shine as the children of the light that we really are. Let us, like Isaiah, reflect the light and the hope of the truth of the word of God. Let us serve as beacons of hope in a world that is desperately in need of it. Are you ready? You ready to be God's megaphones? in word, in deeds, and in your lifestyle. We had the prophets, right? And we're going to hear from Isaiah, like I said, throughout Advent. We had the spokesmen of God, the prophets. We're going to, in our midweek series, hear about the angels. And the angels, as we've said before, are the angelus, the messengers of God. We're going to hear from them. But what about you and I? You and I are called to be the ambassadors of Christ, to be his witnesses in this dark world that others may know the light of hope. Let us go forth in that joy and in that light, empowered by God's word and his spirit. In his name, amen. We join together now in the prayer of the church, and I invite you, please, to rise. We rejoice not only in Christ's presence among us, but in the knowledge that his saving presence will one day fully manifest itself in glory. Let us pray for ourselves and for all of God's people that this, our hope, incite us to greater faith and love. For the hungry and for the homeless, for the ministry and work of fish and for Samaritan's Purse and so many other organizations like that, and for all men who are deprived of their heritage as God's children, for the aged and the infirm, for the many residents of the Niagara Lutheran Health System in Greenfields, that we cherish Christ in them and surround them with our care. For those who may meet with sudden death, for those who grieve over the loss of loved ones, for those who have been experienced death and destruction from natural disasters and warfare, we pray for the people of the Ukraine that they find peace in God's merciful judgment. Let us pray for a truly apostolic parish community intent on an authentic Christian presence in society, for the renewal of our parish worship, for the source of all spiritual vitality and fulfillment, for this holy assembly, that the Eucharist be for us the pledge of eternal glory. Let us pray. We pray especially for those who are grieving 
over the loss of their loved ones. For Dave Balasic and his family, as joy has been called to the Lord, and for uh, relatives of mine, the Goodrich family, we pray for them in this time of sorrow. According to your will, O Lord, we ask your blessings on all who are ill. We pray that you would comfort and strengthen and heal Margaret and Kathy, Alexis, and the 15-year-old boy on the west side of Buffalo who had a liver transplant. According to your will, O Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, for ourselves that we hear your calling and that empowered by your word and spirit, we live and walk by the light of Christ, that we are the children of life and we walk in the light of the Lord. And we let that light shine all around the neighborhood so that people might know the hope that we share. According to your will, O oh Lord, for mission endeavors, local and for uh, worldwide missions, for Carla and, and for the, the mission of Zariah's daughters, for uh, Lutheran Bible translators and other worldwide mission efforts, for the mission of hope in Haiti, and so many other missions, we ask your blessings, O Lord, according to your will, O Lord. Be merciful, Lord God. Listen to the prayers of your church. Grant us through the blessed coming of your Son the help of your grace in this present life and eternal happiness as our reward in heaven through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated now as we receive the offerings and we sing together. Please rise as we continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth adored, heaven and earth are full of claim. Shout the glory to your name. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of all creation. In your boundless mercy you sent your servant John the Baptist to proclaim that in Christ the kingdom of heaven draws near. With thankful hearts we pray, come Lord Jesus, confident that in his body and blood given us to eat and to drink, we receive the forgiveness of sins and so proclaim his death until he comes again in glory. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. O oh, Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sin of the world away. O oh, Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, have mercy on us, Lord, we pray. O Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sin of the world away. O Jesus, on us, Jesus Christ, and grant us peace, O Lord, we pray. Rick, take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. As Pastor had mentioned um, in the beginning, this Wednesday will be the first midweek Advent service. Again, at 7 o'clock, and this week will be um, no potluck. Um, there's an elders meeting next Saturday, December 3rd. We'll meet with Pastor Kruger in his office at 9. Adult Bible class will focus on our spiritual battle. The text, Ephesians 6, for the next three weeks. Christmas decorating uh, is going to take place November 30th, this Wednesday, or the first Saturday in December, December 3rd at 9 a.m. Fish is going to have um, a Christmas toy day. They'll be having that on Saturday, December 17th. Uh, gift cards for older children and teens are greatly appreciated. 
You can drop them off new and also drop off unwrapped toys and gift cards on Tuesdays and Thursdays between 8 and 3 p.m. and on Saturday, December 3rd between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. They'd appreciate donated toys and gift cards by December 6th. Are there any other announcements, anyone? There are more things in the bulletin that you'll be able to read up on, but I just wanted to point out that we do have uh, one more grief um, session for, as a grief support group this coming Tuesday. And uh, if you want to pass out an announcement or put one up in a store or somewhere, there are a few uh, posters on the back table. You're welcome to, to support it that way. Thank you. For our hymn of departure, it'll be from the Red Songbook, song number 180, Thank You, Jesus. Those who are able, please rise.